Hey guys, in today's video I am checking out a lens sent to me by Seven Artisans. It's been a while since I've reviewed a lens from them. Uh, this is all new, it's a 28mm f1.4 for Sony E-mount, so let's check out how it comes packaged. Here is the box that the lens comes in, and this is different packaging. Seven Artisans has finally upgraded or updated their packaging. This is what it looks like, 28mm f1.4 ASPH and E in the corner. Now you get a little kind of manila envelope uh, type of securing fastener here. Then you open it up. All right, so you have a little foam holder. The lens is here. And then back here you have warranty card. Looks like some sort of lens support and a little tool. Adjust focus instruction. Uh, not sure what that is. And then some random sample photos. And the lens itself is nicely packaged in this foam here. Super heavy. Wow. So this is a sturdy lens feels like it's all metal now this is not a sony e-mount at all this is a uh, looks like a leica mount but they did send me separately a uh, leica to e-mount adapter so i'm going to put that on and so now we have a lens that is adapted for sony e now let's take a look at this front lens cap metal it's on there snugly front lens element Looks pretty flat here. So around the front, you have a serial number, DJ optical laying down more hit records, uh, 52 millimeter filter thread, 28, 1.4, and seven artisans. Around the back, you have that adapter, um, which is metal and it locks on. And then on the side, you have no real branding, but you do get some nice etched markings for focus. Uh, focus ring is towards the back, which is reverse of most lenses. Aperture ring is on the front. So the focus ring is very smooth. I like the weight on it. It feels like a hefty um, rotation. There's not a whole lot, maybe a third of a turn, maybe a fourth of a turn, um, but the markings are nice and clear, although they might be a little bit difficult to read um, down here because there's so many lines. But Nonetheless, focus ring is very nice. The lens does extend a little bit as you move it from one direction to the next. Aperture is up front, f1.4 wide open to f16. You can hear those distinct clicks, which I like. And take a look at the aperture blades there, wide open and closed. So I'm very excited to put this thing on the camera and see what the images look like. Let's do that next. All right, and here is what the lens looks like mounted on my a6300. You can see just how long it is, and it definitely does make this setup very front heavy. So the lens itself with the adapter weighs in at 522 grams versus just 400 grams for the camera body with a battery. So uh, it is quite a difference. The lens definitely weighs more than the camera itself, um, but it looks great on the camera body. The colors don't quite match up on the a6300. It's kind of more of a glossy black color for the lens and it's a little bit more matte on the camera body, but it doesn't look bad. It is a decent setup as long as you are okay with the added length and weight of this lens. So now let's take a look at some sample photos and videos using this lens on my brand new Sony a6400. Here we go.
So that is it for the sample photos and videos. And where do I start with this thing? First of all, it is built very, very well. It's built like a tank. It feels like an old vintage lens, but it's modern. So it's really a modern vintage lens. Uh, it feels like it is put together by experts. Everything is just dialed in nicely. As I said before, the focus ring is nice and well damped. It feels very premium. There is a good amount of weight in the rotation. The aperture control also feels very good. Again, I do like the distinct clicks. It feels and it sounds like a very expensive watch bezel. It's just a really nice mechanism for controlling the aperture. In the area of build quality, there is only one minor drawback and that is with the provided adapter here. So while the adapter fits very snugly and nicely against the camera body itself, it is a little bit loose on this mount here, which again, I believe is a Leica mount on this lens. And you could see there's a little bit of play and you'll hear that noise as well. And unfortunately, when you use the focus ring, because it is a little bit heavy, you will hear that noise as you rack from one side to the next. So it's not a huge issue, but it is something you should be aware of. I'm sure there are other adapters out there that might be a little bit more secure. Now let's talk about image quality. This lens does suffer from some flaring. Without any lens hood, I was able to shoot into the sunlight against some trees and get some different colors. Fortunately, the flaring isn't atrocious. It's almost a bit cinematic, and I do like the greenish and bluish tint. Sharpness in the center of the frame wide open at f1.5 is okay. It's certainly not as sharp as the Sigma 30mm f1.4, but it is okay. When you stop this lens down to f2, it gets quite a bit better. f2 is also where you see a reduction in chromatic aberration. There's a lot of it wide open, but as you step it down, it seems to disappear, which is a good thing. As far as corner sharpness, this lens does a decent job. It's better than a lot of cheaper lenses, but it's not quite up to Rokinon standards or Sigma standards in that area. The 28 millimeter focal length on this lens is great for street photography. It's great outdoors for portrait work, although it's it's not ideal for portraits. It does a decent job. It's great for group shots and you can use this thing indoors, which is really nice without having to back up too far. The only issue with it, or one of the few issues that I had with it, is that the minimum focusing distance is pretty far. It has to be at least a meter out. So if you're trying to take a semi close up shot of a subject or an object, you really do have to step back quite a ways before whatever it is that you're photographing is in focus. As far as colors are concerned, they look great out of this lens and out of the A6400 body, which I don't know how much to attribute to the actual lens versus the new color science on the A6400, which is much, much better. And now let's get to my biggest complaint and issue with this lens, and that is the focus ring. Now, I talked about how well damped it is and how it feels great turning it from one side to the other, but this lens is basically a nightmare to try to nail focus because the range is far too narrow. Uh, if you're trying to nail focus on someone's eyes, it's way, way too easy to miss it and to second guess yourself and to go back and forth and back and forth multiple times and to take a bunch of shots, double check, zooming in, double check until you actually get it. Now with the majority of lenses that are manual focus, I will throw away probably 20%, 30% of my shots. With this lens, it was closer to 50% just because a lot of the shots that I thought were focused on the eyes were not quite in focus. Even though this is a 28 millimeter lens, the focus ring range needs to be doubled to accurately nail down focus and to be able to confidently nail down focus. And last but not least, let's talk about price. I actually haven't even looked that up yet, so one second. <sighs> I don't know how I feel about that. So. I was expecting this thing to come in at around $200. That would be my guess. The current price on Amazon is $486. So it is a very expensive, very well built, very heavy lens, but is it worth $486? That's a tough call. Now, because this is a Leica mount lens, perhaps they can get away with charging semi Leica prices when you start adapting these sorts of manual lenses to the Sony E-mount, 
where there are a ton of cheap options out there, it gets tougher to justify that seemingly large price. When you compare images from this thing directly to the Sigma 30 millimeter F1.4, which I think for the Sony E-mount is its closest competitor, well, you guys can see for yourself. Even when I did my best to nail down focus, I think the Sigma is the better lens. And when you consider that the Sigma 30 F1.4 just had a price drop down to like $289 or $279, it's hard not to save a whole lot of money and go with that lens. Uh, it's just as fast, 30 millimeters instead of 28, but it has autofocus and it has that excellent signature Sigma optical quality. So that is it for my review of this well-built premium feeling lens from Seven Artisans. It has a couple of small quirks and it also has a quite steep price tag. But if you guys are interested in checking out more about it or possibly even purchasing it, I will post a link to Amazon down below. So definitely check that out. And also the Sigma 30 millimeter F1.4, which I recommended in this video. I'll post a link to that down below as well. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all of your likes, comments, and support. Stay tuned for more and have a nice day. Bye-bye.